Cat's Daffodils by William Wordsworth. And before we begin with the poem, let's begin a class with Brahmana. I want all of you to close your eyes and sit in a meditative posture. Brahmana. Om. Om Shanti 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 Swastha. Now you can open your eyes everybody. So daffodils. Actually the field of daffodils is evidently the subject of this poem by William Wordsworth. And he has added a natural range of lakes, trees, stars, clouds to add a little bit of texture, tenderness in the poem Daffodils. William Wordsworth 1770 to 1850 was one of the major poets of his time, the finest poets of his time. He was awarded the England's poet Lurita and he always had a concept. He said that poems or poetry is a spontaneous overflow of feelings. A rising of emotions that are recollected in tranquility. Tranquility means calm and undisturbed. And all the poems of William Wordsworth. He used to express them in a very common language or with very common words. Which would be very expressive and filled with emotions and feelings. As I did say the subject of the poem is a field of daffodils undoubtedly. He here has glorified the beauty of nature and the bliss of solitude. Bliss means perfect happiness or great joy. Solitude means state of loneliness. Okay. So I get to the poem. I begin with the first stanza. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over, this is over, Wales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So I sum up the first stanza for you. I wandered lonely as a cloud. The entire line is a simile. This is a simile. The line is a simile. Here, two unlike things are compared by making use of as like as. I here refers to the poet William Wordsworth. Is he's comparing himself with a patch of cloud. William Wordsworth says, he compares his wandering aimlessly in the countryside without any fixed destination. As he's wandering, he compares his wandering aimlessly to the patch of cloud that floats freely in the sky. Clouds always float, they never move. So make use of the word float, okay? So he compares himself to the patch of cloud that floats freely in the sky. And where do the clouds float? They float over valleys. Valleys here refers to Wales means valleys. Valleys and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd. I here refers to William Wordsworth. The poet is talking about a crowd. A group of and what is that? A host of golden daffodils. Host here refers to a large number of and what large number of? Large number of daffodils. I repeat, host here refers to a large number of and what's that large number of? Large number of daffodils. And what does he mean when he says it's a crowd? He means actually the poet means uh, or the poet could not actually estimate the number of flowers that were spread 
in an, an, in an extensive way by the side of the lake. And so he says it's a crowd. Beside the lake, beneath the tree, where were the flowers? Where were these beautiful golden bell-shaped daffodils? They were beside the lake and beneath the trees. And what were they doing? They were fluttering. Fluttering means making gentle movement from one side to another side or to and fro. And that gentle movement of the flowers from one side to another side is referred as dancing in the breeze. Dancing to the tune of the breeze or gentle wind. Breeze means very gentle wind that we feel very pleasurous. The second stanza over here. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. They stretched a never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. So here in the second stanza, William Wordsworth has compared the flowers, the beautiful golden daffodils with those of the stars. He has compared like the stars, they shine in the sky, they twinkle, they are shiny, they twinkle in the sky and they peep from hundreds to thousands and millions and brilliance and trillions and they become uncountable. So were the flowers. Why? Because he felt as if your Milky Way refers to the galaxy and they, they here refers to the daffodils. He means that, William Wordsworth means that, they means daffodils stretched in never ending line. As the stars, they shine in the sky continuously. They twinkle in the galaxy and they become uncountable. They, they cannot be counted. They become so huge in number, in large in number. And that we cannot count them. And so the daffodils looked to him from where he was standing as it was a never-ending line. As there was no pause, there was no end to the daffodils. And up to the extent he could see, he could see only daffodils and daffodils. So he says it's a never-ending line. Along the margin of a bay. Actually, bay means a part of the sea, you know, that is partly enclosed by a curve of a land. It's just like a curve. It's just like a half circle, okay? The curve of a land, enclosed by a curve of a land. And so he says that, where were they? They were to the margin of that or the last fraction point of that curved line. 10,000 saw I at a glance. And so here I refers to William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is saying that he at a glance, glance, stare, see, look. Everything comes from the same origin. That's you see. But they are all used in different situations. Here glance means when you look at something for the first time, your first sight you have a look for the first time, that's called a glance. So when William Wordsworth did look at the flowers for the first time, he had a glance, he didn't count them. He just gave a huge number randomly and said that. He felt as if he felt that they were 10,000 in number because as he could see, the flowers were on and on as a never-ending line. So he just randomly gave a huge number saying they are 10,000. Who? They means the flowers, golden daffodils. Tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Here tossing, tossing means throwing the head slightly forward. The flowers were making gentle movement from one side to another side. At the same time, they were throwing their head slightly forward. And that looked so that was a, he refers that as a sprightly dance. What is sprightly? It means cheerful or lively. Lively means full of life. The flowers looked or had full of life and the dance was full of life. 
So now let's go to stanza 3 and 4. You know, let's come to the third stanza. The third stanza, the waves beside them dance, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jown company. I gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. Here, the waves beside them danced but they. In the second stanza, the poet had compared the golden beautiful daffodils with that of the stars that twinkle that shine continuously and are countless uncountable and here he has compared the dancing of the waves to the dancing of the flowers. They here refers to the daffodils. Both the flowers and the waves were dancing and out there the sparkling waves and glee. Glee means full of fun or joy. Glee means full of fun or joy. Out did. Out did means to surpass or to take over. Both the waves and the flowers, the daffodils, were dancing to the tune of the breeze. But the daffodils, they looked and they were dancing so lively, full of life and cheerful that they surpassed or they outdid or they took over the waves and it was really full of fun or joy. A poet could not but be gay. Your gay means happy or cheerful. And so the poet, and to the poet William Wordsworth, to the poet because a poet is always close to nature gets inspired by natural things to the nature. And so the poet was filled with absolute cheerfulness, joy and happiness seeing this beautiful moment of dancing waves, dancing daffodils so lively, full of life and taking over or surpassing the waves. In such a jown company, a jown company, jown means merry. Okay, it means joyful or merry, M-E-R-R-Y. Company means association. An association, a company in which you feel happy, you are merry, you are joyful to be in. That is called a town company. For the poet, the poet was extremely and absolutely happy and cheerful seeing the sight of the dancing daffodils and the waves and the daffodils were full of life or lively and he refers that association, that gathering, that company as merry, joyful and he feels happy. He places himself in this harmonious relationship. In, uh, between or among he has, he compares himself, he makes himself present in that harmonious relationship with the waves and the flowers. I gaze and gaze but little thought. Gaze means to look at something constantly or a fixed look, okay? But little thought, little thought here means no thought at all. When you're not thinking anything, when you're completely empty, it means little thought, means no thought. What well the show to me had brought. Here show refers to the dancing of the flowers and the waves and the poet includes himself in that harmonious relationship between the flowers and the waves. And so he says the show, show refers to the dancing of the beautiful daffodils and he says what wealth, wealth here refers to the daffodils which had become a never ending source of experience of harmony and peace to the poet. I have written it down for you so that it becomes very clear for you to understand wealth actually refers to the daffodils which had really become 
a never ending source of experience of harmony and peace to the poet and so he refers the show show is the dancing of the beautiful daffodils a field of daffodils which was so lively and energetic that the poet william wordsworth referred it as real wealth because he was experiencing that never ending source of harmony and peace now let's go to the last stanza or the fourth stanza for often when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils and so he says now in the last stanza the poet william wordsworth is away from the flowers is away from the daffodils couch means a resting place you can take it as a sofa but bed is a sleeping place so bed is not a couch couch means sofa where you normally rest okay so whenever he did lie whenever the poet william wordsworth did lie on the sofa on the couch in vacant or in pensive mood the poet has he has given us two moods he has expressed two moods what are they vacant and pensive vacant mood means when you are free from thoughts or empty from thoughts or thoughtless okay pensive means when you're filled with thoughts you're thoughtful is called pensive so whenever the poet lies on sofa or the couch whether he is free from thoughts he is thoughtless or he is filled with thoughts and thoughtful that's vacant and pensive mood they the they refers to the flowers daffodils what do the daffodils do they flash upon that inward eye inward eye means mind's eye mind's eye flash means to suddenly appear to suddenly come and so the flowers they suddenly flash they come to the mind's eye of the poet william wordsworth which is the bliss of solitude i told you what is bliss and what is solitude bliss means perfect happiness or great joy solitude means state of loneliness and so whenever the poet lies on the couch whether he is thoughtless or he is thoughtful whether he is vacant or in a pensive mood the flowers they immediately come they flash upon his mind's eye or inward eye and they give him absolute or perfect happiness if at all he is all alone he is in a state of loneliness and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils at that moment the poet uh, experiences absolute happiness here his immense pleasure and happiness has been sketched out has been pulled out the poet has tried to tell us how happy he becomes he enjoys that moment when he experiences uh, the flowers flashing upon his mind's eye and they are really a source of joy for him happiness for him even in the state of loneliness and he says that and his heart becomes filled with happiness and that's what he experiences in amorous treasure he was accumulating in his mind actually the two lines here the refer what enamorous enamorous means huge very big okay what enamorous treasure he means the poet was accumulating in his mind and so with this we have completed the poem kindly go through all the stanzas once again so that you can clearly reveal what you have learned in this video thank you